This huge nest was built by the weaver bird, a very friendly bird. In fact, several hundred of these birds call this nest home. Not surprising, their official name is the social weaver bird. You have to wonder how such small birds can build such a huge nest. But all is not well in Weaver City. The birds are nervous, and for a good cause. A Cape Cobra has come for an evening meal of eggs and chicks. In fact, Tonight, two cobras have discovered this place of plenty. In order to explore the many holes in this massive nest, the cobra has developed a unique technique. It forms a hook shape, pressing its body against the walls of one hole. This keeps it from falling out while it explores an adjacent hole. But most of the holes are empty. The weaver birds are no fools. They construct many false holes to confuse the snakes. Welcome to the Kalahari. Kalahari Transfrontier Park, at the southern end of one of the oldest deserts in the world, is home to several prides of majestic Kalahari lions. It is also an excellent place to observe meerkats in the wild and to photograph a wide range of grazing animals. Covering an area of almost 14,000 square miles, it is one of the largest conservation areas in the world, with land in both Botswana and South Africa. It's early in the morning, and the Nassau pride of lions is coming back from a night of hunting. This group, which hangs out near the dried-out Nassau riverbed, contains one male, two females, and five young ones, all under the age of three. Once a male lion reaches the age of three, he will be pushed from the pride to go out on his own. They are thirsty and are content to drink from a small pool on the road. There are few natural watering holes in this arid land, despite the wrecked rains that occurred last summer, turning this part of the Kalahari Desert into lush savanna grassland. The male Kalahari lion is magnificent, with his regal black mane, tall legs, and wide paws. Most agree that Kalahari lions are not a subspecies, but are well adapted to the desert ecosystem. Their fur is lighter than that of lions elsewhere, providing excellent camouflage. It is still cool, so the young lions are restless, eager to get in a few hours of play before settling down for their day-long rest. Lions can sleep more than 18 hours each day. Most mature lions in African game parks pay no attention to the vehicles, having grown up in their presence. These young lions, however, appear to be very curious. 
viewing our car as a plaything. He placed it by the window there. Look at this, my goodness. Do you know what footage this is? Jesus Christ. Hey, this one is biting my mother. Do you know what you're looking at? Mm. Don't. Careful. I wanted to close it all the way. You just don't break it, then I will have to yeah. throw it away. <laughs> Excuse me for laughing. Sorry. I'm getting too aggressive in a pack. Yeah. I don't think it's as safe. It's been fun, but I don't think it's I safe. I think we should go too. It's late in the morning, and these tracks mean lions are close by. This is the Awa River Pride, just settling down right next to the road. They'll be here all day, resting up for the evening hunt. This group has two males, rare among lion prides, but not rare for Kalahari lions. These lions have adapted to the scarcity of prey in this normally arid region forming small groups headed by multiple mature males. Kalahari lions can go for weeks without drinking water and can survive on little prey. Males reach maturity at three years and are ready to take over a pride by the time they are five, living between 10 and 14 years. Lions reproduce from the age of three. They don't have a seasonally determined breeding time, but mate as soon as the female is mature. Gestation takes 105 days, when two or three cubs are born. Under the hard living conditions of the Kalahari, mortality amongst the cubs is very high. This brief late afternoon rain has cut into the day-long rest. It's time to get up and begin the long evening walk, usually led by the dominant female. Once it is dark, they will begin to stalk their prey. This is a serious part of the daily routine, with no time for diversions. Meerkats are small burrowing mammals in the same family as mongooses. They live in large underground networks with multiple entrances, which they leave only during the day to forage for food. 
They are very sociable, living in colonies that contain 10 to 30 members. In contrast, mongooses live in small family units and peacefully share the territory with the more aggressive meerkat clan. They are somewhat heftier and have a bushy tail in contrast to the slim tail of the meerkat. Standing sentry is a shared responsibility. With keen eyesight, they can spot predatory birds or rival groups up to one mile away. The name meerkat is a Dutch word that translates to marsh cat, although they are never found near water. The official name is surcat. All day long they dig, and dig, and dig, searching for insects, worms, small mammals, and grubs. They are immune to certain toxins and are known to eat scorpions and poisonous snakes. Perseverance pays. The reward is a tasty grub. Digging around in the sun all day is hard work, so it's time for a rest. Lying down in the cool sand to cool off seems like a good idea. Meerkats are highly territorial and do not tolerate outsiders on their turf. This lone male is making a hasty retreat after having strayed into our clan's territory. Each group is led by an alpha pair who normally kill any young not their own. The dominant couple may also evict mothers of the offending offspring. In a ritual common to most grazing animals, these springbok males are sparring for mating rights. They don't fight to kill, but a horn may be broken during the contest. Springbok breed year-round. These normally peaceful grazing antelope once dominated the region, forming migrating herds hundreds of miles long that could take several days to pass a town. These were the largest herds of mammals ever witnessed. Hunting has severely reduced their numbers. Apparently out of pure joy, young males jump up and down like bouncing balls in a behavior called pronking, which means showing off an Afrikaans. They can reach running speeds of up to 60 miles per hour and can long jump up to 45 feet. The pride is just outside our cabin. Male lions announce their location during the night to keep other lions away from their territory. This is very exciting, but we won't get much sleep tonight. Vultures are resting in a nearby tree, a good indication that there was no kill last night. These birds are of great value as scavengers, especially in hot regions.
Lionesses are more agile and faster than males, and do most of the hunting. Males are much bigger and defend the pride and territory, ranking first in line to feed. Male lions can weigh up to 400 pounds, with females 100 pounds lighter. Lions at rest are blissfully peaceful and sprawl all over each other with lots of affectionate nuzzling, purring, and licking. Pride females usually coordinate their reproductive cycles and collaborate in the raising and suckling of the cubs. Lion cubs are weaned at six months. Jackals are often seen hanging around a lion pride, hoping for leftovers. They can best be described as opportunistic omnivores, cooperatively hunting small mammals and also eating reptiles, insects, ground-dwelling birds, fruits, berries, and grass. They will pick over kills made by large carnivores and even frequent rubbish dumps in pursuit of food. Jackals fill a similar ecological niche to the coyote in North America. Their long legs and curved canine teeth are adapted for hunting small mammals, birds, and reptiles. Big feet and fused leg bones give them a long-distance runner's physique, capable of maintaining speeds of 10 miles per hour for extended periods of time. Jackals live singly or in pairs, but are sometimes found in loose packs of related individuals. They are among the few mammalian species in which the male and female mate for life. Twisting gyrations of these puff adders is part of their mating dance. But beware, this is Africa's most dangerous snake. Its widespread habitat, large fangs, potent venom, mean disposition, and willingness to bite are the reasons why this snake is responsible for more fatalities than any other snake in Africa. Early morning is the best time to view leopards, but the tall grass this season has made them very hard to find. This is our last day in the Kalahari, so the appearance of this beautiful cat is a fitting farewell. For more than 20,000 years, the San people have lived in harmony with the vast Kalahari Desert, getting most of their water from the native plants and desert fruits that survive in this arid region. To this day, most live as hunters and gatherers, providing little pressure on the herds and prides of magnificent animals that also make their home here. With little farming, there is little conflict between man and beast. The Kalahari is in balance.